And together, we will be solving a crime in this very, very small town that we all live in. Can I have a name for this small town? Anyone? Tundertown. Tundertown? We must solve this crime in Tundertown, and we will do that together. Now, of course, this is a very scary and important crime, so pay close attention to all the clues. Let's meet our suspects, shall we? Suspect number one. Can I have a suggestion of a job that this suspect works at day after day? Something else. A contract. A contract painter. Thank you, contract painter. For suspect number two, this suspect has a fear. What is that fear? Socks. Fear of socks. Thank you, fear of socks. And for suspect number three, this suspect has a dream, a goal in mind for her life. What is that dream? To get out of Tundra Town. All right, let's see what happens with suspect number one. <laughs>
Yeah, he's gone, dude. Cool. Yeah, that's what
and you know it can communicate with you through your feet. Earl, Earl, this isn't about feet. This isn't about weaving. This isn't about sewing. This is about none of that. Okay. I know that the mayor. Uh, yeah. He. He's the head of the whole operation. Okay, you see my board up here with all these pictures and the and the the, the, the yarn that I strung between it. Now the yarn is polyester. That's not cotton. What? I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Let's start small. What makes you happy? What makes me happy. I don't know, I have a thing for like Broadway show tunes and, you know, I, I wanted to get out of here, but I, I'm stuck in Thundertown forever and I accept that. Well, we all feel like that sometimes. <laughs> now, you wouldn't do anything to the town because it's keeping you here, right? All I know is that what's keeping me here What's keeping me here is I've got a family here, okay? And all of my family is under control by the mayor and the cotton industry. <laughs> and they're communicating through your feet. Do you understand that? I feel like you don't understand it. I bet you were wearing socks right before you came in here. In fact, I know you were because I saw you take them off, and maybe they got to your brain. You know, it seeps through. And they were the anklet kind. I didn't think you'd notice. Oh, I can smell oh. a sock. I can smell a All sock. Right. And I don't want those beer All right, is your boys with me? I need to know how was your family affected by the mayor? We're gonna affect it by the mayor. The mayor is controlling. He's pulling strings. I can't connect all of it. I've got the strings, and I don't know how to pull them. But if I knew how to pull them, my gosh, my God, I would take this whole thing down. I would shut down Cotton Co. and I would bring Thundertown to its knees. <laughs> would you take something to make that happen? Would I take something? I don't know. Well, well I hear at the power station, here at the power station, that if you put a certain stone up at the top, yes, like the one that the mayor has, then you could, you could blow the whole reactor. Take down the town, then they can't run the cotton gins. Where are you? Thursday, 6 p.m. M. 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 You're in for this for life, right? Oh, yeah. And you wouldn't fuck around for <laughs> like. Not fuck around. me over, right? Not me over. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure, because what we're going to be doing is on the precipice of illegality. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm feeling like... I'm not... I mean... Okay, did you bring the pickaxe or no? I brought a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> you brought a pickle? Yeah. Karen, <laughs> we're going down into a goddamn mine. I got the P-I-C and then my phone gave out, so I just assumed it said pickle. <laughs> so I got a couple of plastics pre-wrapped. Oh, jeez, Karen, there's... <laughs> I'm, I'm all in. I, the mayor's... I, we gotta... we gotta get him. We do gotta get him, okay? And that's the whole point. You're bringing the pickaxe so we can go down to Tucker Town's abandoned mine. Why and we you? mine out the rose quartz. And we take that, and we put it up at the power station. You know who's got rose quartz even closer? Who? The mayor's house. Uh, God damn it, yeah, the mayor does, but he's pulling the strings, you know? I know, I know, I don't wear socks because of him. I don't wear them. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not even wearing no-shows. I'm sockless! I know you're sockless because I can smell it with my nose when someone's wearing socks. <laughs> Look. We can throw the pickle down, and if it hits the rose quartz, we know it's there, but if it doesn't hit it, then it's not there. We well, can try. I might have to, hold on, I gotta wipe, take my foot out of my shoe and wipe my feet. They're very sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 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 Okay, Rose Quartz, if you're there, let us know. Oh, we should put some rope around the pickle, and if 
we roll it back up and it's got some, some shaved parts out of it, we know it's hitting something sharp, we can go down there with our, with our bodies. I'll get this string. Okay. Yeah, I'm just real glad I hired a scientist for this, you know, because this science stuff just goes right left and right over my oh, head. Oh, yeah, I was a pro. So that means there is or is not rose quartz down there. Let's find out. You know, we could have just gone down there with our pickaxe. Well, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, look, half a pickle. You know what that means? Cities. I really liked a tube top from the local store. 
So I put it on and I forgot and walked out the door and my mom said that I was really bad and she banished me from the store. And that's when I started writing in my diary. Interesting. What do you want to do in another time? Oh, well, I don't know, maybe write a book? Do a lesson of something that I'm afraid of, like the piano? <laughs> I don't know, make jewelry? <laughs> What would you make the jewelry with? Um, let's see, my favorite pieces are twine, <laughs> stick. Um, I love a good moonstone. Interesting. So you're not alone often, every time I see you walking around the streets. Yeah, I pretend I'm in my own movie. Would you do anything to make your dreams come true? Oh, yeah. If I become a, an author, stonemaker, piano player, then I can come home and say, Look, Mom, what I did! In! <laughs> You're thankful of your mother. She's fine. She's at home. I mean, I don't hate her, but I don't love her. <laughs> your mom, does she have any relations with the mayor? <laughs> I struck a chord, March. <laughs> yeah, when I was nine and I stole that tube top, she said she was going to tell the mayor, and I thought for sure I'd be exiled. So she went to his house, and then she didn't come home for like three days. March. <laughs> Where are you? Thursday evening at 6 p.m. March! Oh! Where have you been? Out dreaming again? I went, I went to the notebook store. The notebook store? Yeah. You know, only dreams that die go to the notebook store. It's what are you going to do? Write the name of the boy you're loving it all 300 times and fill the pages like in fourth grade? No. <laughs> I'm only going to write it twice. Twice? What a waste. <laughs> Why go to the notebook store? Go to the cement store and make some cement and write it in twice. And it'll be permanent. <laughs> <laughs> You're like your father. You dream, you dream real big, but you don't follow through. Right, that's why we have half of a farm. That's right. I wasn't going to do it. Well, you, ever, you ever kill a pig, <laughs> milk a cow, picked up chicken eggs? No, I don't want calluses. <laughs> Piano players can't have calluses. Don't talk to me about frivolous things like art, and writing, and journaling, no. and diarying. No! I hear you up there talking to Marge. Marge is a book! <laughs> Marge is my book! I know! It's an inanimate object. You're gonna be in this town the rest of your life just like I did. No, I'm not gonna grow old and weird here like you! <laughs> You're young and weird. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, you weren't supposed to see me here. Just pull your pants up, Charles. Okay. Uh, I've got a meeting with the city assessor, so I should. Uh, this is the mayor. Yeah, the I know. Mayor. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch that wall. I just painted it. I feel. Real awkward about Don't it. feel awkward. She thinks she's gonna leave Thundertown. No one leaves Thundertown. Yeah, Thundertown. no one leaves Thundertown. Thundertown is in you. It's what? a great, it's a great city here. You know, yeah. Thundertown gets up inside you like. Whoa. We're the in the sixth largest producer of cotton in the. Uh, That's right. Midwest. You'll work for Cotton Co. Just like everybody else. No, you want to work at Lowe's. <laughs> well, I, I like Lowe's. That's where. <clears throat> nobody works. Nobody works there. Uh, <clears throat> nobody works there. That like. <laughs> nobody works at Lowe's that I. Nobody says it like that unless they know someone that works at it. They like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't like anyone that works at Lowe's. Look at the way she's teetering on her little tippy toe like a princess. Oh no. She's found a frog. <laughs> Charles, what are we gonna do about this? No one can leave Tinker Town. Thunder Town. Whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> it's Thunder Town. Look at these. <laughs> That's right, 100% wool and cotton made here. You're gonna follow your father. You're gonna follow 
those broken dreams of avarice and fun? No, yes. I'm not going to do those dreams. We're going to play piano and learn how to do something weird. And write a book? Sounds like avarice to me. No one's ever made enough money to get out of this town. You would have to flip something real fast, and you ain't got nothing to flip. I've solved the crime. What happened was this. In the time, the town of Tundertown, <laughs> there was Marge. Marge was very resentful of her mother's affair with the mayor. Although young and naive, she never has stolen in her life, except for once. But she thought, maybe if I do this now, I will get back at my mother and steal her lover's most precious jewel. So she climbed up the tower with no equipment. <laughs> First calluses she ever received. <laughs> she had a pickle in her pocket just in case. It was her trusty pal. She was in the mayor's office. But the mayor was in there. She had to sneak and creep to get to the jewels that were right in front of him. The mayor was so into himself that he did not even notice her! She took the jewels. The mayor started to get weak. He is connected to these jewels. Of course, her mother was in the, was in the bed of the office. Pose. She never noticed her daughter, ever. Even in these times. She stole those jewels from the mayor to make herself feel whole and to be able to get out of this town for once. She's going to sell those jewels and before she does, she's going to show her mother and show the mayor. And that is what happened in Tundra Town. Marge is the reason that this city and no one will be able to ever leave it. Oh, thank you.